right, I'm going to go over the um, some parts of the last assignment. Um, I did realize that I did forget to put up the last video, so I will put that up today too, um, that I did. Uh, but I want to show some of the stuff. Some of this is um, the way you could do it is a repeat, like it's the same process, but I want you to see more ways to do it because there's always different ways to put things together and take things apart and whatever else. Okay, so this layout here is all the stuff I did to rebuild my geometry for that area, okay? So remember we're taking that specific footage. I'm not using the exact footage because I want you to use, um, come on, play. Oh, input. Because uh, I want you to use the other footage that I showed. This one doesn't show a whole lot of the foreground. The other one that I mentioned does show more of the foreground, so you definitely want to use that one. Okay. So the process is very similar to what we've already done so far with everything. So our first step in all the stuff that we're doing is doing a camera tracker. So I've tracked all my stuff. <clears throat> and there it is. Um, now a step that we didn't do before um, is that when we are doing our um, scene here, we can actually choose to like rotate this around. So as we're building stuff and we're adding stuff into this, it would really help if the scene was more flat than this kind of like wonky thing. So as you saw that on the banner, anytime you brought the banner in, it had to be like positioned and then rotated some weird direction to get it to fit. So what I do after the fact is I use these rotates and once I see my model builder, there it is. I double click it. There it is. Um, I can take that camera tracker, I can take this information, and then I could rotate like my entire scene around too. So if I go to, let's say, 30 here, um, I can rotate the camera. Now I want to do that, I guess, before I did the model builder. Where are my points at in 3D? There they are. Sure, that's on, that's on, that's on, yes, yes. Okay, so I'm gonna turn off the model builder because I actually don't want to see that right now. There we go. So here are my scattering of points. So uh, I know that this one should be 15. And you'll see how um, with these scattered out like that, it doesn't give me a very good indicator as to like where it is, but you can kind of get a, a general idea that this area down here is pretty flat, and so that's where my ground is. You're never going to get it 100% perfect, but the idea is that you get it pretty close. Uh, by default, it was like that, okay? So you can see that this is not a straight camera. Like, this is my ground right there. It's kind of like on this weird angle. So I literally just went in here and just said, you know, is this one going to do anything? All right, that seemed to kind of help. So, yeah, that's good. Uh, what about this one? If I went 10... Uh, 20, 30, and then end up 33 was like a good number to go with, okay? So I actually just went through and just kind of played with that until I got it to where I was happy with the results of that, okay? Um, if you add your model builder to this, there's my source, there's my camera, and there's we're building. Oops. I don't want to go into it yet. Well, you can see it right there, okay? So I want to see this grid line, um, and then I also use that as kind of like a double double checker because, again, this was kind of like off like this. That looks crazy. That looks much better. So that as this moves around, it feels like the grid is actually like my floor, okay? There's nothing wrong with doing it the other way except this way makes it a lot easier to drop new items into this scene because now everything is nice and square, okay? Um, I'm going to use this model builder for a second, then I'll switch back to the other one. So uh, the next step in this is to go through and start to lay out our geometry for what we're going to build. So I'm going to start off building just this. If you start tracking stuff and you start uh, building your geometry, and no matter what you do, it's just not lining up. Um, I would delete the model builder, try it again. If that doesn't work, most likely something's wrong with your track. And so I would just go back and just double check, make sure your track is still good. Okay. So this is right there, and then I go up a little bit. This is all a review. So that's good there, all the way to the end, still good. 
this one is still good also. Cool. All right. So that's lined up good. Now I'm going to go into my um, edit mode. And to simplify things a little bit, if I go to edge loop, I can actually delete out these lines that I don't need. They're just extra at this point. Um, they're not doing anything to help my model. They're just getting in the way. So I simplify my model a little bit. And then I can grab this edge and do what we did before, which is just extrude and then push things back and whatever. I can't see where that one's at. That's fine, okay? Um, I could guess it and then scoot it over. Here is another thing that I can do. I'm going to undo that. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to extrude this again, and I'm going to pull it out this way. You'll see that maybe I'm a little bit off on the bottom here, so I'll grab my vertice. I'll pull this down. <clears throat> I'll grab. Um, it's actually a lip right there, so that comes out a little bit forward. OK, that's good. Uh, let me grab this edge. I'll do the same thing on this side. Maybe I scoot this over a little bit that way so I can see it better. Looks good there. Again, I'll adjust the vertice down here so that it's more forward. Okay. Now, as I adjust these vertices, I definitely want to check to make sure that, whoops, that's not perfect. This should be down more. Um, the direction I'm moving this may not be right. If I move it down, I may need to move it forward instead, or I may need to move it in the X. The only way to tell is to go back and forth, back and forth, and watch how it's moving. So way over here, that's way off. So I've moved it, it looks like too far forward. So I'm going to push this back a bit, and then maybe over a bit like that. Okay, so that looks like it's cracking good. Nope, it still needs to come over a little bit more. Maybe down a little bit like this. So that looks closer, I think maybe a little more over here. OK, as long as I don't move it too far away from that spot, then I should be good. And then I'll do the same thing here, just kind of maybe push this over a bit. All right, so that's good there, and that's good there. this in some more. All right, so we'll say that that's good. So now I'm going to grab my edges here, and I'm going to extrude this forward. There, so I can tweak that point. Yes, sir. Um, all right, so I'm getting to the point where it's kind of hard to even see what's going on. So what I want to do is I'm going to hit, oops, I'm going to hit lock camera off, and I'm going to actually just spin around the scene and just see what it's looking like and making sure I'm not getting too far ahead. Because if this model turns out that this point is like way up there, something's wrong, OK? So I think I'm actually going to just move this point. Where did the handle go? Where'd you go? Somewhere. Well, let's go back to that. I'm going to grab the point. Oh, now I did it. that handle. Yep, where's the other handle? All right, I'm just going to hit undo until I get that handle back, and then I will grab that again. I don't know why it does that. It's got to be just like a stupid glitch. I'm going to extrude this again. Forward a bit. I'm going to ignore that corner for right now anyway. Uh, then I'm going to extrude upwards, and there it is. Okay, so now if I turn this off and I look at the 3D view, this should look like that wall, OK? If it starts not looking like the wall, something is going on. So always kind of bounce back and forth, especially when we're creating something like this. 
Uh, now I'm going to grab um, these points here. Come on. Or I'll grab the edges. Yeah, that works. Yep. And I'm just going to scoot that over some. over some, there we go. And then I'm gonna grab this edge and this edge. Oops, this one's off too. Let me fix that real quick before I go on to the next step. So I'll just do this one side first. I'm going to extrude this over and just go pretty far. Now I think if I go this far, I can actually see where that edge is and line that up. And then again, um, I'm kind of too far up with this. I went too high. So I'm just going to grab this and this and that and then pull it down. And then I may need to grab the vertices and tweak those. Now, just like before, you want to go back and forth and double check it and double check it. Um, oops. Okay, so that's getting pretty close to where it's at. Okay, so I do the same thing on that side and send it off. Uh, for these areas here, where the doorways are, I can also grab the face, which is right there, and then I can extrude that in. So that way I'm not really guessing where that door open is. I just have like, here's the opening, just extrude it and push it in. And I can do the same thing right here, extrude it and push that one in too, okay? Um, so I go through, I build the ceiling, I build the floor, I build everything inside there, and then I bake it out just like we did our other stuffs, okay? So I'm gonna use this model builder just so we can see it. So there is my, oops, I'm stuck inside here. There so there is my room. Now you'll see it's not perfect. There are some holes in here that I can just come into this view once I get my model builder on. There we go. And then I can grab my vertices, find out where something's not lining up right. So like something like this. And just line up that point so that they are lined up. Same thing over here. I could grab these points and adjust them so that they're lined up. Okay. <clears throat> if this is the direction I'm seeing this, it doesn't matter if both points are lined up. Um, as long as from here it looks good, because that's where I'm mainly at. I could also go into, wrong button. There we go. I could also go into control and shift, hold those down, and that brings me to scale. And if I scale these points together, that will like squeeze the points together so that they'll actually be on top of each other should bring it a bit closer than it was. There that goes. And there we go. I don't know why it's taking so long for it to get down there. Or maybe I'll just move it because it's going a lot slower than it should be. There we go. Okay. All right, so I can move that around and then I bake it out just like before. Now you may, as you're projecting and baking, projecting and baking, you may have to go back and forth until you get it the way you want it to look. That's fine, it happens, you just do it. Um, cool. So I got from there, I baked out this piece of geometry uh, right here, okay? So I'm just gonna paste it over there so we can see it and I'm also gonna copy this and my camera so we can see that as well, okay? So here's my original footage. Here is the camera that I got from tracking it. Here is the piece of geometry that I got from the model builder. So now I'm gonna set this up so that I can basically build the geometry with the textures all over the place. The goal with this is we want to be able to make our own camera and move around as we please, okay? So that's our, our goal when we do this. So I'm going to set up a scanline render. I'm going to set up a scene. These are all things that we're going to need. So let's just build them. 
the camera will go here, the uh, scene will go there. And just to keep everything nice and neat, let's just kind of organize that a bit. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to close some of these nodes because there's way too many things going on. I'm going to pull this down. All right, so there's my 3D piece of geometry. So I need to project the texture on there. So I'm going to go all the way to the left. Okay, so I rewound this. Um, oops. Come on, input. There we go. Uh, I rewound this all the way to frame 59. And I'm going to project this frame onto this piece of geometry. So I'm going to say project 3D. This is what we used before. We picked a camera. We picked a uh, an image, and then that image goes into here, okay. And then this would get connected into the scene, right? So that's um, as far as the look of this, nothing is different. We still have a camera going into the project. We still have a source image going into the project. Those are the same exact things. Now, if I look at the scanline render of this, and then I go and play it. We're probably going to see the exact same thing or pretty close to what the video looked like. Okay? And for some reason, this is really short. I'm just going to hit um, how long is my frame range? 59 to 257. So I'm going to come over here to my settings and set this to actually 59 to 257. There we go. And then set this to global, and then I can actually go through the whole thing. Okay. So what this is doing, and you can see the line right here, is it's projecting every single frame of this camera onto that piece of geometry. So it looks exactly the same. So if I were to hit tab and go into my 3D view, this is what we would see. All right, so every frame you can see as basically the camera is moving, it's just reprojecting that texture onto this geometry. Now what we did in the other video was we would take, let's say, frame number one and we would project it on this piece of geometry. We grab frame 50, project it here, frame 80, and project it there. So we don't need to re-import all of these frames. What I can do is I can use this camera and use this image sequence and actually have it hold those frames, like freeze the frames and freeze the camera so that it's basically using the same thing for each one. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to um, my tab and I'm going to add a frame hold. And I'm going to add it before this projection. Okay, and what this does is it basically says what frame do you want to hold. So I know my first frame is 59, so I'm going to say hold frame 59 here. Now at frame 59, it's projecting the entire video onto that screen. As I hit play, you'll see that this is constantly updating because it's holding frame 59 for which camera is projecting, but the image is still updating. Okay, so it's basically like projecting a movie onto that area. Now for this, we don't want this to happen, but for some things you may actually want that to happen. So I'm going to copy this um, frame hold, <clears throat> and also put it right here. There we go. So now frame 59 is being held for the camera, and frame 59 is being held for the image sequence. So what that means is as we hit play, you'll see that nothing happens on that geometry. It looks exactly the same. If I look at my scan line, though, and then I rewind this and hit play, You'll see how it's basically just projecting onto that image, that part of the geometry. Okay, so there is that piece of geometry getting projected on. Now, if we did this the other way, we would have brought in frame number 59. We would have read in frame 59, and then we also would have copied this camera and then deleted the keyframes from it, right? That's what we did in the old one. This way, we don't have cameras all over the place and images all over the place and then when our file gets reloaded we have to go back and reload all those instances that this avoids having to do that so now for the next area watch how simple this is i'm going to take this whole setup and copy it and paste it and i'll do that twice so this is going to be that um, this is going to be I have to connect this camera to this. That's how it's connected here. 
but it doesn't like to be connected directly to this and then this connected to that. I have to actually connect the camera first and then drop this between them, which is kind of stupid, but whatever. So I'll do the same thing here, drag this to the camera, drag this between it, drag this to that, okay? Now this does definitely look messy, um, but I will figure out a way to organize this so that it doesn't look disgustingly, maybe that will go there, and this will go here, and that will go there. And maybe this camera can just kind of sit nestled inside here. There's going to be some overlap, but this, you know, should make it a bit easier to even just kind of look at. Okay. All right. So that definitely looks a lot neater than it did a second ago, and that can go there. Okay. Um, so now this is going to be the exact same thing. So I basically have three pieces of geometry sitting on top of each other, uh, three cameras projecting the same image on the same exact spot at the same time. So now, let's say I want to go here and I want to fill in the middle of this. So this is frame 160. All I have to do is go to the frame hold and type in 160 for the middle. Go to this frame hold and type in 160 for that. And then I should have seen something happen. Well, I want to see if something happened. Oops, it's not connected to the scene. Why didn't someone tell me that? Okay. <laughs> that one to the scene also. <clears throat> All right, so there we go. So now it's filled in that area. Don't worry about that line. We'll connect that line in a minute. So now I need to fill in the end of this. So that's 257. So then I go to this frame hold, and I type 257. And then I go to this frame hold, and I type in 257. And now that area is filled in. OK, so that's much easier, much more efficient than reloading an image for each one copying cameras, deleting those um, things from there. Especially if I decided that I wanted to use this for something else, this setup here is basically this, these right here, the only thing that are specific, and the camera obviously, are the only things that are specific to this scene. So a year from now I have a different project, I have a different item I'm working on, I can reintroduce a new piece of footage, <clears throat> re-get my new piece of geometry, make a new camera, and then just update these numbers, and then everything will work out perfectly, okay? Now just to show you again another little hack, let's say this one is the most important one, um, just because it's kind of like the top node. Let me close these so we don't get too confused. So that's the important one. This one is the one that I want to automatically change. So I believe, maybe not. you're working. Come on. Nope. Yeah, fine, I'll just do it a different way. Uh, I'm going to right click and do add expression. <clears throat> and then I'm going to say um, frame hold 8 dot knob dot first underscore frame. Okay. So basically, this thing is called frame hold seven dot knob dot first underscore frame. I'm telling it to grab this one. So now, if I go to this, this one, and I change this to, let's say, 60, it'll automatically change the other one down here to 60. So then I don't have to go into both of those and change each one to 60. I can do the same thing on this one and that one. So I'll go to this one, I'll say add expression, I will say frame hold uh, 10 dot knob dot first frame. And then I'll do the same thing on this one. Frame hold 11 dot knob dot first underscore frame. Cool. So that just saves me again a little bit more time, especially if I decide I want to repurpose this whole setup for something else later down the line. If I'm projecting something, let's say in our environment, I may shoot the uh, floor, I may shoot the ceiling, I may shoot the left side of the room, the right side of the room. I may have a camera or a setup like this for each one of those areas to rebuild this entire room using these projections. Now, the uh, issues that we have to deal with, <clears throat> let's rewind this again. This looks perfect, but then as we get to something like this, 
we can definitely see how this isn't lining up, okay? If I go here to this frame hold, which is right there, I can look for lines that might be a good spot to transition between one image and another image. Because what's happening is our perspective is changing as the camera is spinning around. So a couple things I could do. One of them would be I could add um, a whole bunch of frames in here that might you know, help it some. The other thing I can do is just add a roto right after this. And with this roto, I'm basically going to say that I want this area here like that and if I go down here to my scene again that should have done something there's my roto oh there it is I wasn't looking at it that's fine okay um, so now it's rotoed then I'm going to pre multiply it and it only shows me this area, so I'm going to flip it so it gives me that area. So now what's happening is it's only projecting this side right here onto that piece of geometry. So now when I come down to my scan line, you'll see that that looks much better. It needs to be tweaked just a little bit. You know, like that. Maybe a little bit of feathering. Good. And then the same thing here. All right, that's good there. Okay. Uh, now I can also go back here. <coughs> And maybe also outline um, part of this. I think part of that might also be coming in. And what I'm doing is kind of lining these up to hard lines inside my scene. So right here, there's a hard line. That's what I'm lining it up to. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go to my alpha channel, and what should happen is this area should be black. So I'm going to not hit the invert because it'll do that. <clears throat> I'm going to go to this and say minus, and then that should cut it out. So pre malt looks like this. It's cut out there. I go down to oops, my scan line. So maybe I didn't need number two there. Nope, I did not need number two. Okay, never mind. All right, so that's good there. And then I'll come back to this side and do the same thing. So I'm going to go to this frame hold. I'm going to add a roto to it. Always preview the roto because otherwise you're off. So preview the roto. There we go. So there's another hard edge right here. And depending on how many different directions you have, you may have more of these shapes or less of these shapes. Again, if I was doing a room and I'm going left, right, up, down, side, I may have six different shapes for that cube or seven or eight. <clears throat> Let me reverse this again. Let me pre-multiply. And then now if we look at the scan line, something got off. Hold on a second. 57, yeah, that's right. Oh, uh, this frame must stop like right there for some reason. So yeah, so even in this one, I probably need like another frame that kind of comes in right in the middle of this. Or maybe I can just update frame 160. So maybe it's like 180. There we go. So now that's frame 180, so that makes it blend a lot nicer. And so now it's just a matter of tweaking where this is at. And that should be working. Why isn't that working? Oops, I'm grabbing the wrong end. Maybe that's it. 
Well, that's the right end. All right, let me see what that one looks like. Oh, I need uh, one on here too. There we go. So I'm adding a pre-malt onto this one as well, and then reverse it, and then look at the scan line, and then go back and tweak the rotos so they look nice. Alongside again. good for that one and then this one here oh that shape was just throwing me that how the shape looks okay all right so that's pretty good right there okay you'll see there's a black line going through that's my geometry so I have to go back to my model builder. I have to fix it on my model builder, re-bake the geometry out, and then just replace each one of these with that new piece of geometry, okay? And then that would make everything happy. All right. So the idea with this is that now I have this thing projected. Oh, something screwed up there. I'll fix that later. <laughs> Uh, actually, I don't think I have it over here. Nope, I do have something there. All right. All right. Whatever. I'll fix that later. Just ignore it. Okay. So now that I have this, <coughs> this camera that's in this scene, um, it's connected to the scan line, but I'm not actually going to use it for the scan line. Its main purpose is just projecting. That's its whole reason for being in my scene. So that can go there. And that nicer, I guess. Um, I'm going to make a new camera. I'm going to connect this to it, and then I'm going to add, well, we'll see how it plays today. The other day I tried messing with this, and it didn't want to move correctly. So let's look through our camera four, no, six, there we go. All right, so right now we're looking through camera six, so I can play with my numbers here to see where it's at. Actually, let me look through the default camera so I can see where camera six is. Yep, way down there. Yep. And for whatever reason, the views are not showing up, and they should be. So I'm going to add an axis, connect this to the axis, and that gives me handlebars. I lied. Come on. Bars at. All right. Well, it should have given me handlebars, not give me handlebars. So whatever. We'll just deal without handlebars. Um, I'm going to just move this up. So I believe this was 10. And you can see the geometry. Like now it's all projected. You'll see there's some spots we don't have any information on. Like there's where it's cut, obviously. Um, but like here on the floor, I have to do a projection. So I have something there if the floor exists there. It may not. Um, up on the ceiling, same thing. I may have that information, I may not. So I have to double check it. The one I told you to use, the video I told you to use, should have more information in there than this one. Um, so now my camera is lined up pretty much. I'm going to go with maybe 10.2. There we go. Uh, I'm going to switch back to my 2D view. And then I'm going to zoom out a little bit. So, nope, two, one, it's the wrong direction. There it is. So I've zoomed out a little bit, and then I can rotate my camera, and then I can look around here. So what's cool about this is that once I have my scene built, and this is uh, not a complete scene, um, you can really have control over this environment. Like you can actually like move around inside the environment. So 
like I said, if we videotaped the entire thing, we would have that entire room that we could actually use to look around and drop stuff into. Okay, so that's the first part of this, is just getting this thing built so that you have the geometry there for it. And then the next thing you're gonna do is um, um, use the AI that I give you, or the UI that I give you, or um, build your own. So this is one that I'm gonna supply. I have um, another one that I'm working on. If you've never built these, they're just kind of fun. You just build shapes and just try to, try to keep some nice spacing, different line weights, colors, whatever else. Uh, we want to bring this into um, Nuke so that we can play with it. Um, as we do that, we have to consider how this thing is going to be animated so that we bring in the correct pieces. If I bring it in just like this, it's going to bring it in as basically just an image, which could be fine, but I may want to have certain things cut out and not and so on. So let's say like for this one, I want each one of these to be a separate item here. Okay, so I'm going to take... And then I double clicked, I guess. There we go. I'm going to take all of these. I still have my isolation mode open. I clicked out. There we go. I'm going to grab all those. I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to drop it onto the new layer. I'm going to color this black and white. And then um, that should be good. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go to a new document. This is 1280 by 720. Come on, get rid of that. Oh, that is a hot key in my viewer over here that allows me to do something else. So I will hide the transparency grade, there we go. And then I will paste those in there. There we go. So now if I go and save this as a ping, oops. if I go and export this out as a ping, go here, here, 25. I have that folder. It's not in this drive, but Kona underscore um, putting it together. Work. There we go. Bottom. So these are my bottom boxes. They will be saved as, like I said, a ping. And 72 is fine. should be transparent. I'm not sure why it's coming out like that. Okay, we'll find out. And then I'm just going to read in those things. So there, there, and there, 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 there. All right. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So this is uh, what I just brought in. This is uh, that stuff. Okay. So those are separate items. And then I would just go through this entire thing and then just start separating these areas out that I may want to do something different with. Inside this box, I may want to have something else happening inside there versus this entire thing being brought in and then me trying to separate everything out after, which is again, something you could do. I think it's easier to do it in Illustrator. Okay, I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna make a new document again. I'm going to paste it and then I'm going to export it out as read that in, there's top box, and there's that one. Okay. <clears throat> so then what I can do with these is that as I start to get stuff, I can bring it in. Right now, I'm not going to do anything while bringing those into that for uh, right now. I'll do that after. Um, so once you get your user interface, once you get the pieces kind of separated, into what you want to do with different things like this area here probably doesn't need to have anything fancy going on with it it's probably just going to be just separate items let's say this here let's say that there um, let's say this and this and this and that and that and that okay i think that's it copy that new document paste it and save this out. Um, random bits. And then I think I just have this piece left. And that piece left. I think 
those are the two I have left. If I miss something, I can always come back and um, get it again. Come on. Copied, yes, new. Oops, that worked. Uh, I need to fill this with black and white just so I can see it. And then export this out. Screen. So I brought in screens, I brought in random bits, there we go. So this should be all of my pieces here. So now what I'm going to do is just merge them all together so that they're all basically back um, into one thing. Okay. So now I view it, it looks horrible because everything is just kind of like all over the place. These pieces are here, these are here, these are there, those are there. Yep, that's right there. I'm making sure my alpha channels are all good. Yes, okay. Um, so now I'm going to transform them. So I know that this here, uh, that here, the, that here, this here is my biggest one. Uh, but I know that all of these are going to be basically 1280 by 720. That's how big all of this stuff should be. Um, so a couple things I can do, oops, not that, I can do a crop node, set this to, uh, did I reformat it? No, there it is. 1280 by 720. And that should be good. Okay, so I'm going to take this crop node and I'm going to drop it there. And now this entire thing is 1280 by 720. So then as these things join together, that's 1280 by 720. That's 1280 by 720. This is 1280 by 720. Okay, so they're all basically in the same uh, sizing. And then this final merge, I'm going to put as 1280 by 720 also. Why is it still not updating? That's that. Oh, um, I also have to make sure that each one of these, the bounding box is set to, no, union should be fine, over, yes, yes, mm, why aren't you updating? skip that step and just adjust it later. So I'm going to add a transform node to this. No, it's still not updating. Why aren't you updating? Because I didn't hit reformat. Is that why? Yep, that was why. So I forgot to click the reformat button on each of these. So I'm just going to hit reformat. There we go. And so now I look at the end one and now I can see everything and that's perfect. Okay. So now I can start to drag stuff around <coughs> into where they're going to go. This one here is going to go up top. Now I'm not seeing anything um, on the screen because they're also not pre-multiplied. So I will also add a pre-multiply to these. Oops. There we go. Copy that, paste it, paste it, and paste it. There we go. Yeah. What was that? right here. Yeah. That's just the color that came over from here. Oh, okay. um, because that one is that. Oh. I mean, that's part of it, but then the rest of it is um, black because there's nothing else behind it. Oh. So if I go to this and I look at the alpha channel, you'll see, yeah, there are some lines there. Where did my lines go? Crop, 
multiply. Probably just because they're blacks, they're not showing up. All right, so I'm gonna transform. I think that one should be in the right spot, so that's fine. I'm gonna go to this one's transform. It will get confusing the more transforms you add to this, so just make sure it's all lined up. Uh, nope, that one should be good too. Yep, that one's good, that one's good. This one here needs to be scooted over so that it's inside the box there. Okay. So now it's set up, and um, that's all I need to do at this point for this, okay? So that's the next thing you can do is get your user interface, get it separated, and get it brought in. And then the third thing you can do um, is I'm going to provide you with this piece of animation. <clears throat> now this is different than what we uh, did before. This is a 3D rendering. Let me set this to input. So it's just a mechanical arm. So one of the things that I'm going to like throw out that you can see is this mechanical arm basically kind of um, uh, showing off a 3D animation, okay? Now be creative with what you can do with this because I'm going to show just, you know, basic, that's what it is, but obviously we want to go a little bit, at least a little bit more in depth with this, okay? So, all right, so that's the basic version of it. Um, what I want to do is I want to basically adjust or uh, recreate this um, using what are called render passes. So if you've been in 3D before, um, all of the properties of this thing can be broken down. So if I look at just the diffuse, this is just the flat coloring. If I look at the coat, this is the shininess of it, like the reflection. If I look at the indirect, this is the indirect light on the surface of the item. If I look at specular, this is a different layer of reflection on here, okay? So um, one of my assets will be this. So that's all of my, basically the robot arm being broken apart and then put back together again. So I'm going to copy this. Okay, and I'm looking at this as an asset. So here's my original background asset. Here is my UI asset. And then I'm going to make another asset down here. Eventually all of these will come together. So don't worry about putting them together yet, but they will all come together in one spot. So I'm going to go to this arm and I'm going to reset this to RGBA. <clears throat> and then I'm going to extract out. So under here, these are all the different channels that exist. I'm going to shuffle and pull out each channel. So I'm going to go to AO. And this is the AO shuffle. So I'm just going to call that AO. Set that aside. I'm going to add another shuffle, connect it. And then this one will be the um, coat. I will call it coat. I'll add another shuffle. This one will be the diffuse. I'll call it diffuse. Oops. Make another shuffle. This is indirect. Okay, I don't have to view them as I'm uh, seeing them. I'm just creating them because I know what I need from them. Uh, that was indirect. I also need shadow. And what else do I have inside here? Specular is my last one. Okay. Okay. So now I'm going to take all of these passes that are here and put them back together. So I'm going to take these and put them in order first. So specular um, and diffuse will get added together. So let me set these here. So specular um, and diffuse. Um, oops, sorry, not those. Diffuse and indirect go first. Then specular and then coat. Okay, so I'm just going to add some merges. So my A will be always on the left, and my B will be coming from above. 
A will be here, B will be there. A will be here, B will be there. Okay, so what this should give me if I preview this is it should look very similar to the original one. Okay, not perfectly. That reflection or shininess seems to be a bit more drastic on that one. It definitely is, uh, but it's pretty close, close enough at least. Okay, so my diffuse and indirect get merged, my spec gets merged, and my coat gets merged. I'm also going to switch all of these. Instead of them being um, overs, I'm going to switch them to pluses. And just by doing that, you'll see that I get this a bit closer to the um, end result or the beginning result of this. So there is one, and here is two. So you see it's just a bit closer, okay? Especially that highlight is now adjusted. Um, I don't have the shadow on here, and that's one thing that's missing. So I'm going to go to the shadow. And um, first I'm going to look at it. So um, the shadow, whenever you render it out of a 3D application, is always backwards. So the white spots are supposed to be dark, and the dark spots are supposed to be white. So that's how it renders out. Um, if I merge this in, I believe I can verify it before we do it. If I set this to exclusion, nope, that was wrong. From, that's the one it was. Or yeah. Yeah, I think from was probably the closest one that would get us there. Yeah, whatever. Um, so I'm not going to use that. I'm going to leave it as a, uh, I'm going to set it to multiply. And what it's going to do is anywhere it's dark, okay, so right here it's dark, right there it's dark, it's going to darken the areas on this. So when I view that, you'll see that that area gets darker. The shadows, like I said, should be the opposite of this. Where it's white, that's where it should be darker. So I'm going to take the shadow and I'm going to invert it. And I'll just set this to RGB because that's all I really want to, to invert. Um, and now it takes this color, it inverts it, and then when it gets multiplied, you'll see that we then get these shadows. So there it is before, there it is after. Okay, and so now we should be, again, just one step closer to getting to where that original thing was. Again, it's not perfect, but it gets us pretty close. Uh, and then I'm going to take the ambient occlusion, which is here, and then I will also merge that into here, and then also do a multiply on that one. Okay, so now let's take a look at that, and then let's take a look at this. Okay. So now here is my end result. So here is the original, there's the end result. You'll see that the end result with the ambient occlusion on here looks a lot better. We get a little bit more pop um, on these things. Okay. And then let's organize this real quick because that's gonna, gonna be good. So that looks good there. So I'm basically pulling down a dot for each one of these nodes. And then I can just go here, and then there, and there, and then there. So that definitely looks more uh, neat and organized. OK. Cool. Um, now I have, inside my folder, I have a couple other ones too. So. put them in a different folder because I was rendering some other stuff. Uh, these are all on the server with uh, or the um, Dropbox folder. So I have one that's called wires and one that's called wires and trans um, for your transparency. So this one here is like a glow around the edges so I'm going to use that. And then this other one is a wireframe so I'm going to add that in there too. Okay so I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm just going to merge and then change this to a plus. And then what you'll see is here is the before, there is the after, 
you can see how this adds just a little bit of rim light around the um, object. Now, it might be too much, so maybe I want to take the mix down a little bit and find a nice kind of in-between here, like that looks good like that, okay? Uh, then I'm going to take my wires and then merge that in. And then again, I'll change this to a, uh, not a plus, a multiply. There we go. Now, if you're wondering, like, differences between plus, multiply, what do they all mean? Um, something like this that's black and white, I basically want these black areas to be there and the white areas not to be there. Okay, so thinking of this like math, these white areas are basically values of pretty close to 1, and the black areas are values that are pretty close to 0. So when you do a multiply, it basically eliminates anything that's white, and everything that was black or dark is just darker. When you do a plus, um, anything that's black isn't there, and anything that's white is just added on top of the other color. Okay, So here, when I added this on top of the other one, it just added the color on top of it. Here, I didn't want to add the white on top of it because it blew everything out. So I multiplied it so it just shows those lines. Okay, now you can do fancy stuff to do to make this look neater, right? So I can actually do like a roto on this. Okay, so I just added a roto. I'm adding it to my lines here. <clears throat> and then I'm going to just draw a shape. So I'm just going to draw um, from the beginning of this. I'm drawing a rectangle, I'm going to grab these, I'm going to scoot it over, and then I'm going to square off all these edges by hitting Shift Z. Okay, and then I'm going to animate, I want this to be bigger. There we go. Um, I'm going to animate this kind of sweeping across the scene. So at frame 1, that's where it is, and then let's say at frame 100, this is all the way across that. So what should happen now is as it's animating and that roto comes in contact with this, you'll see how where the roto exists, we can see the wireframe. Okay, So that's kind of a neat way to be able to show off this is what the wireframe looks like. Now I can also use the dope sheet and maybe just adjust these. I think that might be too um, that might be too long of a time to be going by. So like something like that might be good. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Um, and then what I could also do if I wanted to do that to other stuff, I can copy that roto and just paste it onto each one of these areas. Now, if I did this all the way from the top to the bottom, um, they would all happen at the same exact time. Okay. Um, also, this is kind of annoying to have to do this. Each one of these rotos that's here is the same exact animation, so it makes no sense to actually have the same exact animation happening on every single one of these. Um, so I would want to go through and update each one of these keyframes. So I may go, let's say, to this roto, go to the dope sheet. Let me close all these first. If you have too many things open, it shows all of them. So I'm going to open that up in the dope sheet. There it is. And then I can grab this animation and then just offset it some. Okay. So what it's going to do now, just so you can see it, is here's roto uh, 5, here's roto 6. So as I hit play, you'll see one roto is going to go by. There goes number six, I believe, first. Right. And then sometime later, oops, the other one's going to go by, or did that one already go by? Yep, so five went by first, and then six went by, okay? So if I did this for each one of these, I have to go back and edit each one of these rotos. Again, something you could definitely do, going through each one of those, but that's just like a lot of extra work. I'm going to actually put this on the very front one right here. 
And then I'm going to drag my mask to this one. And then using my control key to drag out little nodes. This is why we keep our stuff organized the way we do. Masks are always on the right, and then the other stuff is always on the other side. So I'm going to drag this to each one of these. Do So now this gives me the exact same results of all of these happening at the exact same time. So again, if I look at this, where this uh, roto goes over it, right there, you can definitely see the difference between here is the original and then here is the one with all the fancy stuff on it. Okay, but now let's say that I wanted to offset each one of these so that they're like five frames or 10 frames off. Okay, uh, I'm going to go to frame offset or time offset. And if I just added a time offset here, actually right here would work. And I set this to, let's say, five, um, not five. That's where it is at frame 19. Where is it here? Yeah, that's right. That's five frames off. Okay, just making sure. All right, so now this uh, next one will be five frames off. So now if I copy this, and this is what's kind of neat about that, and I paste it into each one of these, each one of these will be offset five frames. Okay, so what should happen now is that as I hit play, and I'm just going to actually do just a still image here. I think this is, um, there we go. So I'm just telling it to hold the first frame. Um, that way I can kind of preview this maybe a bit quicker. There you go. So now you can kind of see how all of these things kind of sweep across that. And then the very end of this, let's see where that one's at. Oh, this is adding each one too. So I maybe not want to add each one. Maybe I want to subtract each one. That might be a better way to do that. So let me go to my roto and say, you know, make this. Uh, I don't know why that's doing that. <laughs> Uh, let me set this to maybe a subtract or a minus. Constant. I'm going to put a constant in here, make this completely white. Make sure it has an alpha. There we go, there we go, there we go. Okay. So now when it comes to the roto, what should happen? Yeah, there we go. So there's a black bar going across. That's right. All right, so we shouldn't see that stuff. I just put the constant in there so we can see it. All right, something's going on. Because it's not holding my frames like it should be holding my frames. Frame hold here, yes. Time offset for this, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, whoops. These uh, down here are not frame held. That's why. There we go. So now everything is frame held. So now when I rewind this and now when I hit play, you can see how those things kind of swipe on and off. So that's one way you can kind of fancy it up a little bit, maybe a different way. Um, but look at different ways you can kind of explore these tools to kind of show the arm off in a more like techy kind of way. If I wanted to color these black lines, I could definitely do that as well if I go to, these are my wires and they're white and uh, black. If I went in here to a grade, and then I went to my uh, black point, I believe, and I turned this, oops. Uh, there we go. 
red and blue, there we go. Uh, so now when I come back to this, you'll see I have now green lines on there versus the other ones. Um, I could also add maybe a glow to this too. Maybe I want these to glow. So I'm gonna take this, and then I'm gonna add a glow to the lines, and then I'll merge that into the mix. And that is incredibly bright. <laughs> Go to the glow, let's take the threat tolerance up. Why are you glowing so much? Uh, this should maybe be a plus. Oh, whoops. Um, I added it to the uh, wrong spot. There we go. Let's go there. That's why it didn't look so good. Now it looks even worse. Okay. So I'll pull that down. We'll take this brightness down. Uh, I'm going to do the effect only. That way I'm just dealing with the glow. make this bigger like this. Maybe I'll take this tolerance up a bit, the brightness down a bit. There we go. So now there's kind of like this like little subtle glow happening on top of that. So that's kind of neat how that's set up too. Okay, so that's again just something you can kind of play with to see if you can get different results just screwing around with this kind of stuff. Uh, we could also bring in, I'll give you um, the animation in, oops, uh, the animation in a, a, in a limbic file, just like the, um, just like the banner was. Oops. So much stuff happening. There we go. So this is the limbic file of that. So it's basically, here's the animation of this moving around. I guess I should probably go all the way to the uh, read geo, right? Read geo. And there's my arm. I'm going to open it. <clears throat> it's going to ask me what I want to bring in. Just say um, create all in one. That's fine. I'll adjust it later. It'll create several nodes. I'll have to cycle through and delete what I don't want. Ideally, what I want is the geometry on one layer or on one node, and I want my camera on another node. So the camera that I used for this, I believe, was Perspective 1. So let me find my camera here. Nope, Perspective, OK. So I'm going to delete all the cameras except for one of them. There we go. I'll delete the axis. I don't need those. And I just need that. So camera 12, I'm going to make sure I go to File and Choose Perspective. And then I'm just going to drop these things into a scene node. So this is scene. That goes there. This goes here. This goes to a scanline render. There's my camera. And then what I should get from this <clears throat> is I should get that camera in the same exact spot that I had my original one in. Okay, so these renderings that are here, this camera is lined up perfectly to match that. So if I want to do anything in 3D and add it on top, I can do that. Okay, um, so this is something you may want to do in 3D. Um, I may want to do a particle system. So I'm going to add a particle emitter. And basically, the geometry goes here, the emitter goes here. And then when I rewind this and hit play, you'll see particles kind of flying around. Now there's too few particles to even see what's happening. Uh, but if I take the emission rate to let's say 50 or 150, there we go. So now you can kind of see them on the arm a bit more. Now what's happening is for every single point that's on there um, about, it's emitting 150 particles. So it's picking 150 random points and just shooting particles out of those points. So I'm going to play with these settings. They look confusing, but if you just kind of go through and read each one, uh, it's less confusing. So velocity is speed. I'm going to take the speed down. Uh, Nuke will want to recalculate all the frames. So it's going to go through and wherever frame I'm at, 93, it's going to calculate all the way up to 93. There it goes. So now when I hit play, 
you can see how much it's moving, and you can actually see there's the arm underneath it. Let me rewind this again. Maybe I'll set this to 0 0.05. That's kind of cool. All right, that's neat. Uh, let me go to my size. <clears throat> There's two numbers, a size and a size range. So if I set this to, let's say, 1, um, the particles are huge. That's way too big. Point zero 0.01 is way too small, so maybe I set this to point 0.2. And then I go to this range, and I set that to also point 0.2. And what that will do is it will give me a variety of particle sizes, not all the same size, which is, again, um, something kind of neat that we can do. Maybe this is 0.4. No, it's still too much. 0.2, I think, was a good number. Um, I can also go to my velocity and maybe add some variation there so that all the particles aren't doing the exact same thing. There we go. So that looks kind of neat. Uh, I may want to come and change the color of this, so I'm going to go to my color and just adjust my color a bit. And you'll see, oh, it's updating, there we go. There we go. So now we have that color. <clears throat> Any changes you do, you typically want to do at the beginning because it's much more responsive, and then you can hit play and then let it go. Uh, random C, that's fine, that's fine. All right, so that's good there. Okay, now I'm also going to add in here a particle gravity. And then what this does is it, just like gravity, it pulls the particles down. So instead of them just kind of floating in space, They'll kind of trickle down, which makes it give it uh, makes gives it a cool look. Not makes it give it. It gives it a neat look. So let's rewind this again. Let's hit play, and you'll see how they kind of like drip down. Okay. Now, when I lose the shape of the arm, maybe I want to tweak some stuff. So a couple things I want to tweak. The size of it is now way too much. Be good. Yes, yes, yes. Let's uh, pretend you hit cancel because I do this all the time. And then you rewind it and you see that it does an update. Uh, when you hit cancel, it automatically pauses it, so you have to hit unpause. And then you'll be updated. There we go. Okay, so this is still like it's falling way too fast. So let me go to rewind it, grab the gravity, and then set this number to something much smaller. I want to have some gravity, some way it's kind of pulling it down, but I don't like it as much as it was doing. Um, there's also a trail that you can see. So as the particles come up, you can see this trail here. <clears throat> That's the particles dying, basically. So I'm going to go to the max lifetime here. I'm going to cut that in half and give them a range of an extra five. Well, cutting it in half means they're not going to live as long, but then I take the random range up a bit, so that way there's a bit of a, they all don't die at the same time. It'll be a little bit more random as far as how long they're going to live. There we go. All right, so that's kind of cool. So let's say that I like that, how this is looking. This right here is just another asset. Basically, this is a rendering that I did to make it look like it's wireframe, this is no different. This is just something I did inside Newt. So I could actually take this and then merge that into the original one. And now when I hit play, oops, and I disable all these frame holds, that and that and that one. Now I'm going to see those particles basically on top of the geometry as it's moving. So again, it gives it more of a, a digital kind of look. It makes it feel a little bit more fun, a little bit more uh, uh, technological uh, than it did when we first got it. 
And this is one of the huge uh, uses of Nuke, especially around here. If you worked at an automotive company, you worked at a place where they photograph cars or um, CG render cars that they're always doing this kind of thing on them. So there are 60 some frames. Let's rewind this and hit play again. So you can see that definitely looks more exciting than just the original one, which was that. Okay. All right, so play with it. You don't have to get yours to look exactly like mine. Um, you should be going through and kind of exploring different ways that you could adjust some of these things. Maybe you're adding um, grade nodes to your ambient occlusion, or maybe you're adding grade nodes to any of these other things and just kind of you know, see, experimenting, see what happens when you do that. Okay, so basically I have these assets here, which are my um, UI, which we'll get into again uh, another day. I have this one, which is my rebuilt environment. And then I have this one, which is my rebuilt um, robot arm. Okay, and like I said, eventually what's gonna happen is these assets will all eventually come together. So don't think of them as, I have to start here like that we've done in the past. I have to start here, make sure this one works, then make sure that one works, then make sure this one works. Think of it like this piece, this piece, this piece, and eventually they'll all come together. At big studios, each one of these areas is a separate department that would typically work on stuff for the movie. So the CG department would work on doing this stuff with the robot arm. The tracking department would work on this stuff here where they're tracking and rebuilding the geometry. This stuff here would be like the motion graphics area where they would put that inside of it, okay? Now this, even though I brought it into here, you could also experiment going into After Effects with your Illustrator file, animating your stuff in there, and then exporting the stuff out from that. After Effects does have some cool stuff for it that Nuke just does not have, okay? So you could do that as well. Um, cool. So that should give you plenty to kind of screw around with, um, especially until I get that uh, piece of footage. The footage will be a green screen thing, so we will um, be cutting that out. And again, that will be a different asset that when everything is complete, we'll just basically start piling stuff together to make our finished scene. Okay, questions yet? 